when we're developing native script applications or really any mobile applications, we need to be able to handle bad scenarios, bad internet connections, and we need to be able to test that before we release our application. How do we test slow internet connections on a Mac computer? That's what we're doing in this video and I'm gonna show you two methods on how you can do this. Hey, welcome back. This is Alex. If you're new here, make sure you subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell next to the subscribe button. And also, if you like this video, I would appreciate a like. Today, we're looking at how to slow down your internet connection. Nobody wants to slow down the internet connection, but if you are developing applications, this is something you really should check once in a while. Now, if you're developing web apps, this is easy. Chrome already has this built in as do other browsers that support developer tools. But this is not so easy when you're developing on a Mac and you've got an iOS simulator or an Android simulator. How do you slow down that internet connection so you can test how your app behaves when there's a slow connection? And believe it or not, this is not something that's built into the simulators. I don't know why. I'm gonna make this video and next week Apple's gonna say, oh, we've got this built into the iOS simulator now, but they haven't done it yet. So hopefully this will help somebody out. Let's check this out. So here's method number one on how to do this. But before we do that, let me just set this up for you. So right now I've got a new application and I have this button here. When I tap the button, it triggers an HTTP get to this uh, endpoint, which is just a free endpoint for testing HTTP requests. And it's called httpbin.org slash get. They have different methods you can use, get, post, images, and so on. I'm just doing a quick get here and getting a result. How do we measure the time here that it takes for this result to come back? So we're gonna use something that comes with NativeScript and it's the profiling module. So I'm gonna do an import here and this is coming from at NativeScript slash core and we wanna import a couple of things here. First of all, we wanna import that object that's gonna come back as a result of our profiling operation, which is gonna give us the number of milliseconds that the um, timer took. So that object is called timer info. We'll use that. And then we also need something called profiling start and profiling stop. Stop is a bit of a misnomer here. Stop actually pauses. I think stop should just stop and then erase the session, but it just makes a pause. So we also need to clear that session, reset the profiling session, and we're going to import something called profiling reset profiles. All right. So right when we do the tap, we're gonna go ahead and trigger start. So profiling start, and this requires us to provide a name. You can have multiple different timers going on at the same time in your application. This one will take a name and I can just call it anything. I'll just be literal here and actually call it anything. So right before we issue that get request, we're gonna start that timer and we're gonna call that timer anything. And when we get that promise resolved, at the end of that get, this is when our fetch comes back after going out to the internet, coming back with the results. Right over here, we're gonna call profiling stop. And we must give it the exact same name, which is anything. So to avoid any problems, I'm just gonna copy and paste that. This will return to us an instance of a timer info object. So I'm gonna go ahead and cast it as that. Now, if we take a look at what timer info has on it, it has a count and a total time. We're gonna use that total time. And I'm just gonna console log right here, total time, and let's print out ti.totalTime. This is gonna be a number. If I just do this, multiple clicks on the tap button will result in additional timers and we're gonna accumulate that time. So it's gonna keep adding to it. So what I wanna do is actually clear that interval or that timer. So I'm gonna call profiling reset profiles here. And this method will actually clear out any timers you have running. So be careful with that one because if you have timers running somewhere else and if you're checking your application in other places, calling this will clear those out as well. So I'll go ahead and do that because I'm just doing a simple example here. And this should give us the timing between, you know, the network requests whenever I hit tap I'm gonna do it multiple times. So let's go ahead and run this. NS run iOS dash dash no HMR. And when the application restarts, we'll go ahead and try this out. All right, so our app restarts 
and I'm gonna go ahead and press Command K here just so we get a clear terminal. I'm gonna hit tap and we see that the total time is 119. I'm gonna do this a couple more times because the first time is for some reason much slower. And as you can see right now, I don't have any network throttling going on at all. And we're getting pretty fast responses. Eight milliseconds, seven milliseconds, eight milliseconds, seven, six, and around that. So this is gonna be the baseline for us to be able to slow this down and see what we can do to make this slower. Method number one, you ready? So a little while ago, I covered something called Charles. It's a tool that you can use to actually view HTTP traffic going back and forth with your simulator. Check out that video. I'll link to it down below if you haven't seen it yet. Charles is a paid tool, but you can use it in trial mode. It works for half an hour before it stops working and you can just restart it when it does. So it just annoys you like that, but it's a very useful tool. If you're really using this quite a bit, you should just buy it. It's a really handy tool. So here I've got Charles running and you can see all my network traffic from this machine going through it right now. It's acting as a proxy and listening to all my network traffic. And some of these have lock icons. I tell you how to bypass the lock icon in that other video that I was talking about. So to clear everything, you press this broom button. It just clears everything out. If you want to record or stop recording, you click on this button. Here's the button that we're interested in. It's a little turtle button and it means start throttling. So if you hit this turtle button, everything on your machine right now, all the network traffic through your machine is going to be slowed down. How much is it slowed down? Well, we can go to proxy and then throttle settings. Here we can select what type of preset you can use. You can enter manual numbers here, but I usually just use the presets and you can say 3G, 4G, or you can even go to a 56K modem. So we're going to go to a 56K modem just to show a drastic difference. And I'm going to click OK here. Now let's go ahead and clear this. And I'm going to go back to my simulator and bring up this as well. Hit tap. And we see that we get results of around 400 to 500 milliseconds. There's an 800 one in there as well. 399, 574. So you can see that this is quite a bit slower now. It's taking more than half a second on average to issue that quick get request and get a response back from the network. So this is a really good way to slow down the network traffic right there. If we go back to proxy in Charles and go to throttle settings again, let's check out the 3G connection. I'm gonna click OK there. Let's go back to VS Code and our simulator and I'm gonna tap here and you can see 3G is quite a bit faster. We're getting numbers like 142, 175, 200, 139. So around the 150 range, 140 range on average. Pretty good, pretty good. Let's check out a different setting, throttle settings. Let's check out 4G. 4G is a little bit more typical in most parts right now. We don't have 5G yet. Well, 5G is supposedly out, but it's not really out, come on. All right, so 4G is what you'll likely see out there in the wild. So this is a very real scenario here. So if you remember, we were getting eight milliseconds back when we were not throttling at all. And that's because I have very fast internet here. I have a gigabit download speed here, but this one 4G is more realistic. So now I'm getting results in about 100 milliseconds back for a simple get request. All right, so that's Charles. By the way, when you're done with this, <laughs> make sure you go ahead and turn that throttling off because what's going to happen is you're going to forget about that and then go use the internet and everything is going to be really slow and you're just going to be banging your head against the wall. So turn that off. I'm just going to turn Charles off and I'm going to show you method two now. Now method two actually is built into Xcode. It's not really built into Xcode, but you can access it through Xcode. So I'm going to open up Xcode here and I don't need to open up any projects or anything. I just need the menu up here. So I'm going to go to Xcode up here in the menu and then open developer tool, more developer tools. By the way, this is something we do need to install. So that's why I'm going here. Now what this will do is open up the browser. You don't need to have a paid account, but you need to have a developer account in order for you to be able to access this portal developer.apple.com slash download. And then you can take a look at all the different downloads available here. And what you want is additional tools for Xcode. 
Now it does say Xcode 12 here, so make sure you find the one for your version of Xcode. I'm gonna get this additional tools for Xcode and it's a download. So you're gonna click on this additional tools for Xcode DMG file, make sure you download that. And once you've downloaded that DMG file, you double click on it and it's gonna open up this right here, additional tools. What you want to do is go to hardware and inside hardware you'll see this network link conditioner dot pref pane so this is a tool that you double click and what this will do is actually ask you to install this network link conditioner into your preferences on your mac so it's going to ask you are you sure you want to do this i'm going to hit install and it's going to ask me for my password let's go ahead and do that and Let's just go back and I want to show you the whole preferences panel again. You'll see this new icon here called Network Link Conditioner. If we go in there, you'll see an on off switch. Now this is a lot easier to use than the Charles one, but downloading it is a bit of a pain and you need an Apple developer account. So I'm going to go ahead and switch this to on and we have different profiles here. We have LTE. We have something called very bad network. I'm curious about that one. Let's try very bad network. I'm gonna go ahead and select that one. And let's head over to our Visual Studio Code again and our simulator. And I'm going to, I need to run this again because I terminated it. And the app restarts. Let's go ahead and clear this terminal here. I'm gonna hit tap. And this is supposedly a very bad network. So I'm guessing something's happening right now. Maybe it's taking its time to deliver this response. Wow, okay. that is really bad 10 seconds okay i'm gonna try this again hopefully the second time it'll be faster okay this is better it's still very bad indeed 2.7 seconds let's try this again uh five seconds this is a very very bad network indeed let's go back to our link conditioner and i want to switch this to 3g to see if this is closer to the numbers we saw from charles so this is simulating now 3G. I'm gonna hit tap 220, 219, 218, 220. So yeah, it's pretty close to what we saw with Charles, but this is so much easier to use. It only does one thing, which is really slow down your network. So also make sure when you're done, go ahead and switch that to off. And now we'll get numbers like six, seven, and eight. So there you go, folks. That's two methods that you can use for slowing down and testing your iOS or Android devices on your Macs during development time. It's time for swag giveaway. So a little bit ago, I had this video called Native Script 6 and 7 Compatibility. As you might know, there's a lot of differences between NativeScript 6 and 7. NativeScript 7 CLI is backwards compatible with NativeScript 6 projects, but there's a few caveats that I go into with this video. So check it out and make sure you're aware of what's going on, what are the differences between NativeScript 6 and 7, and also what are the different parts of NativeScript, NativeScript CLI, NativeScript Runtimes, and NativeScript Core. That video talks about it. I'll link to it down below, so check it out. So let's check out the comments here. Thanks to everybody that commented down below. Noble and Savage. This is an interesting comment right here. Are you considering a detox tutorial? Considering the latest update on that front. All right, so my answer to that was, what is a detox tutorial? <laughs> and I completely blanked. Of course, I think Noble and Savage is talking about this plugin called Detox, which is gonna be the newest way going forward to do end-to-end -end testing with your native script applications. And this plugin right here is located in the official plugins package for native script. You can check out that GitHub repository for information and how to install it, how to run it, and so on and so forth. Am I gonna be doing a tutorial on this? Possibly, but the documentation on the plugin itself is pretty decent so check that out start there first if you're in a rush otherwise thanks for your comment noble and savage i don't know who you are there's no avatar there is no name thanks for your comment get in touch with me and i'll send you some swag if you like this kind of content please go ahead and subscribe to this channel you'll help me out a lot and if you like this video or find it valuable give me a thumbs up and you can also leave comments down below thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next one